carrying on from uh, my first uh, talk on uh, energy and uh, Robert Nadeau sent Sheehan. This, uh, he uses the word a lot, um, centre circle. So perhaps it's better if you listen to his uh, words than, than mine. But, you know, we, we start Aikido and most, when we're beginners, we panic at most things. And it takes years, in my opinion, to, uh, to get the technical so that uh, you don't keep saying, oh, can I do that again, can I do it again? And when you stop saying, can I do it again, to your partner, you usually find that um, you're, uh, you're still saying it to yourself, oh, that wasn't very good, that wasn't very good. You seem to get less good ones than you do perhaps bad ones. A lot less. And, um, but nowadays, I've been thinking about how much people don't have training time. When I first started, uh, I just immersed myself in Aikido day after day after day, year after year after year. But now uh, people have lives. I had a life as well, but they say, oh, we have a life to live. So they can only do two, sometimes three times a week. And even though this is uh, great, the time we, we're at work or at home and not on the mat, we do have time where we can think, think about the other side, developing the other side. And this is where I think the energy side can come in. I've been teaching for the last few years about walking heavy. If you normally walk, then you're thinking and you're thinking in the upper body. If you, um, just for a few steps in the house or you know, wherever you are at work or in the airport, wherever you are, if you've got a few moments to spare, you can walk what I call with heavy feet. This is a sort of grounding. So when he says centre circle, he's talking about two things. And when we first started Aikido, our teachers always say, uh, make yourself feel grounded. Lower your centre. You know, build your centre. This word of centering oneself uh, was talked about a lot, but rarely expanded on. I remember doing the same as I see students doing now, bouncing up and down, you know, we would try to sort of get, get into a tiny hank or get into a technique. And at the end of the technique, we would find ourselves bouncing, trying to push us sort of mass downwards absolute useless exercise but that's what the human brain thinks because it doesn't know what else to think listening to um, Nadoshihan being interviewed by Patrick Cassidy another hopefully well-known top Iwama sensei I think resides in Switzerland now. He was talking about uh, to Nado Shian and said um, that he's made his own mark. You know, he's he's different than the rest of the crowd. And you may never have thought about it, but do you want to be? like a sausage factory student, do you want to come out the same as all the rest, you know, doing your Aikido te techniques, technically looking good, being precise. Well, I'm one of these people, and I, and I don't mean to sound like me, 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 but I'm one of these people, I've always felt 
a loner, an individual, an oddball, whatever you wish to put that tab on me. So I try to do things differently and I try to search where I think people are not talking about or not doing. You see, when I see most of the top senses, Japanese or from around the globe, we're all different. Our Aikido is shown differently. No two people are, are the same. So we're working on what our body frame will do, what our body mechanics will do. We don't really see anybody doing our senses Aikido. The famous Budo film of when he was around about the age of 50, the one with so many Ukis attacking him, he was very dynamic, very powerful. And yet, 30 years on, he was still dynamic and alive and buzzing, you know. His energy, even close to death, seemed to be far greater than people half his age. So I had decided a long, long time ago that I needed to look for more. So in my out of hours, out of map hours, I tried to think of not just this center that Nado Sheehan talks about, but when he talks about the circle, it's those, you know, that may come into his circle, or those that um, are further out on the mat, in the street, wherever you may be. So I started thinking that um, I should connect with the people that are going to attack me. Um, and what happens is we become very individual and we become only, it, our only importance is for us to get the technique correct. We don't really consider the other person as far as the attack they're going to administer upon us. And what I've found is this centre circle word of his, means that you need to connect before they enter into your circle. And the quicker you can connect with them, it doesn't matter if they're 10 metres away, if you notice they're there, your mind connects and something inside my mind may not work with you, but something in my mind connects with them and it, it says, I'm connected. You may doubt yourself. Now that's up to you. I don't anymore doubt myself. If I think I look around and I might connect with someone, then I'm connected. They can even be sitting in a lineup and you look and you go, connected. And you perhaps call them up for OK. If I just look and think, oh, he, he, he's always good in a high fall for Rimanagi, call him up. I've never worked like that. I know a lot of senses do, but, but I don't work like that. I, I just look along and I connect. As soon as I connect, I call them up. If it is a very technical technique and I want to teach it, and show it clearly, then I may select a certain UK. The switch of connecting wasn't asked upon or called upon by my mind because I'm going to do something different. You could say, ah, oh, but aren't you allowing a weakness then if you don't connect with them? Perhaps I am. I haven't thought about it. So, 
you may like to try this. Now, why we can't try it too early is, most of the time, you'll be standing there on the mat, you might have one partner. Because you can see them with your eyes, you think that that's enough. Trying to bounce at the end of a technique to be more grounded. One day when you find how to be grounded without bouncing, you will understand what I mean. You will just know that you're grounded. You won't need to question it, you'll just know. Most of the time we live in our upper body, therefore we cannot be grounded. But, but what, after a few years, you become grounded naturally. When you become confident, and I don't mean egotistically, but when you become confident, you will find that um, you can relax a little more. Not arrogantly, but you relax a little more. Let's just say, for this instance, you know that you're going to say to the person, or the teacher said to the person, Yokomanuchi Shianagi. You know the technique, you're comfortable in, within yourself, your own body, and this is what Nado Shihan talks about, centering, you're centered. And then a circle, center circle. So you make your center and that circle, whatever size this is going to be for your attacker, um, let's say they're five meters away much further than your arm will reach. So it's outside of your physical circle, but it's not outside of your mind circle because you've connected with them. So I'd like you to try this from time to time. Just say, no, I can't connect with the person. Oh, yes, I think I've connected with them. Look around the class. Oh, I don't know why, but I think I'd be connected with this person. Try to grab the mazukes as soon as you can. The Aikido may flow better, it might just work better. But keeping this parallel of connection, to me, is required if you ever want to do O Sense's Aikido. The more we become relaxed, we don't become relaxed to the point where we're not observing. This word called Zanshin means awareness. We could call it Zanshin if you prefer, and we call it, call it awareness. But I'm talking about something a little finer than this. I'm talking about when you can almost, you taste it, you know it, and you look along, in my case being a teacher, I look along the road and I, I go, I can connect with this person, this person and this person. I don't have to call them up. My mind is just telling me who I can connect with. A little bit like yin and yang, positive and negative. So once you've connected with a person or more than one, what happens is you've, you go to the next level where you start to keep that connection and their timing when they raise their hand it's almost as if they're raising something with inside you in your body you can feel the going up and the going down and I believe this is what Osensi had he was in a like a awakened enlightenment so he could almost not be there he would be like the ghost of the other person and whatever they done, he could blend with it because he'd got the perfect timing of, of the, those people, the, the Yukis. And it didn't matter who attacked him, he could just quickly switch this plug in. So where I'm telling you about, um, oh, I think I can connect with this person, this person, this person. From then on, you can go... Why can't I connect with this person? What's blocking me? Where's the block on this? Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed listening to this um, stage of how to work with your energy and how to become more grounded. It will take 
individuals different years of progress and training. But you can start by walking heavy with your feet and just notice the difference between how you normally walk and the heavy mass that you can make under your feet. If you can notice that change, then you can start working on the other part of the mind of connecting with others. And we'll continue this uh, journey together further if you are interested. Thank you.